working here? No, I'm live streaming right now. No. I look like the mother DJ, man. Because <laughs> I lost my I lost my um headset. Like your earbuds? Yeah, I don't know where it went, so I have to use my headphones. <laughs> Sleeve. Check one two one two. You like this background better than that? No, but I thought you were working in the other room, so I didn't no, want to bother you. It's too late. I already set up here. <laughs> you mother bitch. Yeah, I'm like wicked tired. Let's see. How do I open up a new window? Sorry. 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I just learned how to do this live streaming thing. It's pretty fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to go into my screen right now. Because I can't see how many people are watching right now. Last stream. You can see the dogs in the background too. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Where did everyone go? Probably I think these people came like three hours before. I said Pacific Standard Time. I did. I put it even. I put even like a Google Calendar, man. I know. Okay. Okay. I think it's just lagging. I have a whole pie, people. Pie, pie, pie. Great. Cool. So I'm gonna start right now. Um. And I'm gonna wait for people. I'm actually going. It's 4 a.m. in the UK. The fuck, man. Early riser or someone's drunk. <sighs> All right, guys. 11 p.m. in New York. So, where are you guys from so far? So we got UK in the house, New York. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start. So I'm assuming you guys read my article on Refugee Hustle recently, and I was talking about how like I was investing since I was like 11 years old, and then I lost most of my money because uh, I didn't fucking look at it, and I went too aggressive. So what I did for you guys, I didn't want you guys to make the same mistakes. So what I did was actually put a step by uh, step by step process that you can just invest in 20 minutes. You know, so. Some of the um, questions you sent me via email, some of you guys were having trouble and stuff like that. So I'm just going to leave that as a live Q&A and stuff. So you can just ask me any questions, you know. Um, if you got any about, like, investing and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Just got a question. Did any of you guys, like, in the stream, like, did you guys um, open up your Vanguard accounts or anything yet? Nah, maybe no one opened up their account. Whatever. Um, 
but yeah, it's really not that hard to um, to like start opening up a Vanguard account. I think the hardest part about the process I was talking about is choosing like what type of like what sort of account you want to open, whether it's like a Roth IRA or taxable account, and those that's probably the hardest decision. And so to break it down really simple, it's um, so like a Roth IRA is a it's a tax advantage account. So you get a lot, to, you get tax benefits. Um, I'm not going to go into like exactly what it is, but just know that you, your money is more locked in if you go Roth IRA route. And then if you go taxable, your money is more fluid and stuff. Like it's easier to take out and whatnot and um, take out. And but the only thing is you don't get all those tax advantages from uh, Roth IRA. And so. Um, so a lot of you guys like kept on a kept asking me like which account should I open and stuff like that. And how I started like when I first started, um, I opened up a Roth IRA, and then as soon as I because I didn't really need the money right away or anything like that, and so like for me, I just what I just tried doing was like I opened, holy shit, um, hello doggy. Um, but what I did was I just opened up a Roth IRA because I didn't really need the money at the time, and um, so I could get that tax advantage account. When I started making more money, like through my job and stuff like that, that's when I started doing a taxable account. And um, basically, I wanted more money that I could move around a lot more, like for different types of investments and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna look at the chat really quick. So, uh, Brian says, I opened up a Fidelity account uh, a couple of years ago. Dope. Um, Brian, what kind of account did you sort of open uh, with your Fidelity account? I actually started with Fidelity, too. Um, the reason why I didn't stick was because uh, Vanguard. Honestly, I, I really like the Vanguard um, system a lot more. You get better return and stuff. But I think Fidelity is a great company to actually start with, uh, especially if you don't have that much money. And if you're another thing about Vanguard or another thing about Fidelity, they actually have offices which you can go to. So that might be good if you want to talk to someone too, especially if you're starting to begin. Now, just just be wary though. Sometimes they try to sell you shit. Like, dude, sometimes they sell you these financial products that you'll never use and stuff. Um, already had a Vanguard, not yet. Opened up a Roth IRA. Dope. So, um. Yeah, so you opened up Roth IRA, great. Uh, what, Brian, so you opened up a Roth IRA, what kind of funds did you put it into and stuff like that? Um, because a lot of people, like, they open up their 401ks, Roth IRAs, and stuff like that. And keep in mind, all this sh shit I'm talking about today, it's probably not sexy, but, you know, I'm just giving you a basic framework and stuff, and then you guys can ask me any sort of questions that you want. But, um, you already have... Uh, Caleb already had a Vanguard, not yet. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so, um, oh shit, I forgot what I was going. But anyways, um, the world on fire. What's stopping you from doing your, let's break it down. Like, what's stopping you from opening up an account right now? It's not open. I'm... Okay, cool. So Brian um, says, since I just opened it, I'm kind of stuck uh, about what to do next right um so let's see uh so what you probably have your money is in it's in a regular brokerage account aka bank account right uh, i think that's the easiest way to sort of break it down it's basically a bank account right and it's just sitting in cash um what you need to do is actually buy uh, index fund or buy any sort of funds that you want. So there's all these different options once you throw your money into this bank account or brokerage account, right? And if I'm going too fast or if I'm going like too like, if I'm using too much jargon and shit, just let me know. I'll dump it down, you know? Um, Cause granted, I didn't know all this shit when I, I first started, but um, uh, where was I going? So you have all these options. Uh, I gave you guys like in that refugee hustle article, I gave you like the Spartan 500. That's Fidelity's own like index index fund uh, account. I think it's called Spartan 500. Um, double check the letters that I put in there, and then you can see like 
past performance and all that. But I would just like every single month, I would automatically just contribute money into that index fund or whatever you're going to do so that and also another question I got whether I should reinvest uh, the returns or not into the account and what I recommend like if you don't need well what I did was I didn't need the money right away so I reinvested all that money so whatever gains you get on that uh, on that I was about to say prescription fund sorry guys I've been working a long day at the pharmacy but anyways any gains that you get on that um, index fund or anything like that it'll just buy more funds so then you start like uh, exp the exponential growth right um, okay so let me check on the chat uh, I did open I got stuck with reinvesting my uh, reinvesting or money market settlement fund. So I did research, decided on reinvesting. Unfortunately, because I'm not home where I was born. Oh yeah, uh, I think uh, anywhere but here. I think you. Uh, I think maybe you asked me a question on my email. Sorry, I've been working all day, so I haven't had time to respond. But um, that happens, man. Like, cause at the end of the day, you're trying to. It's just like a bank or what not. Like, they're, they're going to want to identify you, make sure that you're not making fake accounts and shit like that. So, um, yeah, uh, sorry to hear that, man. Uh, and disclaimer, I don't know, like, the rules for, like, people out of the country investing uh, into Vanguard and stuff. I just provided Give Vanguard because it was really easy. Best bang for your buck. The mud a good deal, right? So, that's, like, cheap funds. Uh, really easy and the help is always like right there dude like I always use the live chat for everything too um, and my account won't be available until I mail them my application with my signature okay I gotcha so I mean like you know what sometimes you just run into run into things like that and you know what um, I think you're headed in the right direction, you know? And, like, I always want, like, my article, it's not to really um, teach you, like, the step-by-step -step basis. It's just to show you that, like, dude, anything you do in life, it's, most of the time, it's pretty reversible, right? And you can always change your mind. And let's say if, like, suddenly the index funds, they fucking tank. You lose all, you almost lose all your money, you always have the choice to not do it, which I wouldn't recommend, but you always have the choice to not uh, stop contributing or anything like that. Um, yeah. Uh, so I got a pharmacy question. Um, I guess I did open this up to a live Q&A stuff too. So since the chat isn't really busy right now, how many people I got watching? Hold on for a second. 17 people in this bitch. Nice. Um... Okay. Uh, hi, Kevin. I got a question pharmacy related. I went to pharmacy school for a semester. Hated it. Draining my life. Retail rotation sucked. Everything sucked. Gotcha. Um, wonder if you made the right decision. I interviewed for a, a companies for data analysts, business. Okay. Um, I guess my goal is to go into data science now. I did want to go into pharmacy informatics. Great. Um, I'm actually going to save your question for later because I'm actually learning a lot about the pharmacy informatics. I just want to make sure that all my facts are together. And um, I also have my friend Brian, and he's like, if you didn't watch our video, he talks about how he did residency and stuff. So I think that will be like, just keep your eyes open for my videos because I'm going to be covering more inf like pharmacy informatics stuff. Uh, and it's, I got really, really lucky. Actually, <laughs> how I met my friend was that I just saw um, literally, I was just at a network networking event. I didn't even meet him. I met his freaking girlfriend and we kicked it. And like, if you check, uh, see my old videos and stuff, like, like maybe two videos ago, I talk, I introduced my other friend, like my other viewer, uh, Angela and stuff. And she, it turns out, Brian's her boyfriend, and that's how we hit it off. So, <laughs> that was pretty dope. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, I also want to ask you, um, so, some of you guys are stuck, whether you, so, I just want to recap a few things. So, a lot of you guys are stuck either opening your Vanguard account or uh, Fidelity account, right? Um, 
what to do uh what to do like once you have some money sitting in there and um the last thing is uh whether you should reinvest or not so i'll go quick bullet points right i would recommend reinvesting especially if you're young you know that's the more money you throw in this into this or the more money that you invest the more it'll pay off in the long run because like I said, investing, like if you're investing this way, it's going to be a long-term gain. It's not like an overnight type of thing. But when you are when you get older, you always have the choice to. And let me talk about more the why about investing and stuff because I didn't really quite explain that in my article. And maybe I'll do it on my future articles. But um, I want to talk about like, dude, so my uncle, right, um, he is retiring right now. Uh, same uncle that gave me that five hundred dollars that I fucking blew. Um, he is retiring right now, and um, his stocks and stuff are just making money. And he, instead of reinvesting the dividends, because, like, dude, when you're like older, you don't money's not as much of a big deal. Like when you're twenty years old, or when you're like when you're a young kid, money is a huge deal because you don't have it, right? But when you're older. I mean, you have all you have enough money and honestly, you're not going to live another 50, 60 years to enjoy it. So fuck it, might as well just live off the the dividends, um, the dividends and stuff. So that's when stocks and stuff they pay you a certain amount of money to because uh, you invested in them, right? And you can just live off of that. I mean, my I I don't want to get into the specifics of my uncle's account and stuff, but I mean, you make quite you can make quite a bit uh just off dividends doing nothing so that's what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to build sort of a um a like stash pile full of money so i can just live off the dividends and i'm doing it in different ways but one of my main ways is like how i describe like index funds and stuff um yeah uh let me check the chat. I haven't checked in a while. Uh, oh, cool, 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 cool. Um, so I got some new things. Uh, how would it? How good would it be to check up on funds? Um, Caleb answered Brian. Depending on what you want to accompl accomplish, take a look at target date funds. Find the date you want to retire, withdraw funds, and set it. Forget it. Yeah, that is actually very true. Um, and I actually used to do, uh, I, Caleb's advice is actually really good too. Um, I, like, if you really, really want to set it and forget it type of thing, you can do target date funds. And I used to have a few. Uh, I think one of my, like, 401k accounts or something like that had target, uh, target date funds. And um, if you guys don't know what target date funds, basically, as you get older, when you're young, you can take a lot of risks. Like, let's say if you lose, I don't know, 25% of your portfolio or 50% of your, half of your money, right? You have all that time, like, from 20 to 60 to regain all that back. When you're 60 year old, 60 years old, and you lose half your portfolio, that's going to fucking suck because you're living on that money now. So what a target date, um, target date fund does as you get older, it will it will change the balance of your uh, reallocate your uh, portfolio or your money. So basically, as you get older, you can't take as much risk. So it'll move into safer things like bonds and stuff like that. And that's what a target date fund is. It's really good for the average beginner. Um, personally, uh, I think I get better return on target funds, but. That's also a really, really good way to go if you had known nothing. And honestly, you can be like me. I did target date fund, uh, target uh, date funds, and um, I actually moved all my money into uh, I moved all my money into index funds eventually. So that's also a really, really good way to do it too. Uh, motif, okay. Uh, motif investing taxable account. Should I open up a Roth IRA? Um, yeah, I would rec like honestly, I've had all the pretty much vehicles, investment vehicles, because it's not good or bad. It's uh, there's advantages to each different thing, and 
instead of looking at it as good or bad, try to look at these things as tools, right? So the best bang for your buck. So I'll break down the three major categories of investment like type of things, right? So you got your taxable accounts, right? What taxable accounts are, it, you don't get the tax advantages, but it's very fluid. Your, your money is liquid. So you can move money with relative ease. Um, so a 401k, what is the advantage of 401k? So if you guys don't know what a 401k is, when you get a job, a full-time job, they basically, uh, a lot of companies will match you. And so what you do is uh, you decide, okay, I want to use X, uh, X I want to do 5% of my pre-tax dollars into my 401k and my company will match me 5%, right? Um, so when I say pre-tax dollars, have you ever looked at your pay stub and seen like how much you make? So maybe you make $10 an hour, right? But then you look at your check and you calculate it out, you see all these deductions and you only get $8 an hour. Well, why is that? Well, it's because Uncle Sam, the mother government, they take, they take your money, dude. And so uh, the 401k advantage is um, you don't get taxed now, but when you retire, I forget the age limit, I think it's 60 or something or 59, I can't remember anymore. Um, that's when you get taxed, when you withdraw from there. Now with a uh, Roth RA, it's taxed now. So use all that money. So use your eight dollars an hour money to fund your Roth RA. You put in this retirement account. You can't touch it. I mean, there's some exclusions. I'll go into that later. But um, you put the money in there, and it grows tax free. You never get taxed on it. So that's the mud a good deal, right? <laughs> um, so look at these things as different vehicles and different tools. You know, like you're not going to use a hammer when you you're going to use a screwdriver shit like that you know um stuff like that god damn oh. yeah so i hope that answers your question um i'm sorry i'm kind of going into like i feel like this is kind of boring too for a lot of people because it's not easily digestible and it's kind of like it's um I don't know, man. I think it's really fun, like, tweaking stuff and watching your money grow. I think that's the most exciting thing. Um, but, like, the technical aspect and shit, it gets kind of boring. So, I would just stick to the KISS principle. Keep it simple. Mata stupid. Yeah. So, just keep it simple. Just start out with something, like, really basic, like what I said. And just start out like that. Um, there's so many options out there. You don't want to get overwhelmed. Like, even with all the stuff I'm actually talking about, it's kind of overwhelming if you've never heard it before. Um, but yeah. Um, allocation, funds, accounts. Okay, Caleb asks, what am I currently invested in? Allocation, funds, accounts. Um, so pretty much uh, right now, since I'm 28, uh, my, what my plan is, is that I'm all pretty much 100% into index funds, you know, because I can bear the risk. Um, I can afford to lose some money. It's not the end of the day. Um, I have to suck some dick for, for some money and to eat. But fuck that. Um, yeah, so basically, that's how I allocate. <laughs> and I have, I used to have a 401k. I don't get, got that anymore, uh, since I switched companies and stuff. So, I have, a um, used to have it, rolled it into a traditional and stuff like that. Uh, I don't qualify for a Roth. So a lot of this stuff, like, I've, I've done in the past and whatnot. And pretty much all my, a lot of my money is in um, different investment things. Um, I also started doing peer-to-peer -peer lending, too. Oh, and plus I have a few stocks as well. Um, so, yeah, I have, I have, like, a little bit of everything so far. But it wasn't overnight. It wasn't like, oh, I want to start investing. I'm going to open up 401k today. I'm going to open up Roth IRA today. I'm going to buy a bunch of stocks. It didn't happen. I was just like, hey, this is really cool. Like, this is really interesting. I want to know more about it. Let's try it. Like, maybe at first I didn't have, like, a grand or two to throw in. Maybe I did just $100. But over time, I just built it up a little bit. Um, whew, okay, it looks like the chat's picking up. Yeah! 
Um, so, but, oh yeah, to finish your question, Khaled, um, I wanted to, uh, so as I'm getting older, so I'll probably switch to like a 90-10 where I'm 35 and slowly dial it back from there. And so, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, how long do you think it would be to take up to Fidelity and Vanguard? I'm willing to put a few hundred dollars into funds. Um, I think the most important, rather than doing like uh, dumping all your money at once, do a slow trickle, man. Um, just, just put it on autopilot, put it on automatic investing, choose the amount you're comfortable with, slowly roll it over. You're gonna be doing something called dollar cost averaging. Because what that fucking basically means, dude, it's really hard to time the market. You don't know what's going to go up. You don't know when it's going to go down. So what you do, buy at the high, buy at the low, and all kind of average each other out. So you get the average price. And if it drops really low, buy more. So that's the strategy I use. Um, I mean, is it the best strategy? Ideally, no, but... You know, like, I don't, my goal is just to use investment as a tool. I don't want to fucking micromanage. Fuck that shit. I just want to have money later in the future and sort of build more assets for myself. <clears throat> and if you guys don't know what asset here, uh, if you guys don't know what asset is, basically all that means is putting money into your pocket. That's all it is. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, how long do you think it'll take to move up to Fidelity to Vanguard? Um, oh, oh yeah, sorry. Um, to answer the first part of your question, it really depends. Like, it really depends how long, um, how much, how much you're willing to put in each month. There's no rush, dude. Don't like. I wouldn't go broke trying to do this. But if you got a little spare pocket change or you got some Chinese New Year money, yeah, you know, if you're Chinese like me, you know, every Chinese New Year you get. You got to make it rain money. Instead of making it rain at the strip club, you should throw that into a brokerage account. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, for me, it took me maybe like a year or two because um, I was working slowly at like at the pharmacy, like when I was a technician and stuff. Shane um, McGurney. Hey, Kevin. Sorry, I fucked up your name. Hey, Kevin. I'm a big fan of Refugee Hustle. I have a question. It's not on the topic, but you can decide whether you want to answer or not. Okay. I'm having trouble deciding whether I should do medical science at University of Physico Physiotherapy. I have the grades, but I'm not sure. Basically, how did you propose I make a decision? So let me just relate it back to my article, man. Um, so sometimes, like, we don't know. We don't really know, like, what decision to go with because there's so many options right you can choose this school that school you can choose this investment or another investment how do you know where to start and i think a good uh way to start is actually taking my friend uh so taking um friends out to coffee and maybe you find some of these students at the university just pick their brain see what it's like see what what sort of things do they regret? What sort of things like, and just talk to them. And I think that will help guide you into a better solution. Like you can go online too and try to see other people's experiences and stuff. But I think like that one-on-one -on -one personal interaction is a really good thing. And plus you're going to make friends. Like that's how you make friends, dude. So don't be shy. If they think you're weird, fuck them. It wasn't meant to be. Whatever. Uh, I've taken plenty of people out to coffee. And I still try to do it to this day, you know. Um, so, yeah. Uh, to be honest, there's not much difference. Between, yeah, you're right. Uh, Caleb is sort of right. I mean, there's not that much difference. But personally, like, I just like the funds at Vanguard a lot more. Because, um, like I said, you, they typically... When you look at the ratings and stuff like that, Vanguard's is always pretty much number one and stuff like that. I haven't checked it recently, but um, it's what I'm comfortable with. It's what all my friends do. It's what my whole family does. So that's why I stick to Vanguard. But uh, my uncle and stuff, he also has, he has Vanguard and Fidelity. So you can have both too. Fuck it. You know, um, you're just diversifying yourself more, which would be good, you know? Uh, what index funds? Um, so I, S&P 500 versus total stock market versus sector specific. 
Um, I just pretty much did the S and P five hundred. Um, like I said, I'm not super. Uh, I'm not super into EFTs and uh, ETFs and stuff like that. Um, I'm pretty basic when it comes to that stuff. But I gave my recommended uh, funds. The funds I do. Um, I do the Admiralty uh, Vanguard funds and stuff like that. The index funds uh, for Vanguard. Um, but you need a ten thousand uh, dollar minimum to invest in there. So that's what that's what I did. Um, I live in Australia. Can I still use Fidelity Vanguard? I have no idea, dude. <laughs> um, literally, just pick up the phone and just uh, call them and just try to see. I'm sure you can, but I don't know. Like, and here's the thing. I like this is the reason why I don't want to get into like super 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 specific. It's because um, one, I'm not uh, I'm not a financial advisor, right? Uh, two, like, I don't know your personal situation and stuff. Like, I grew up in America. Like, all that, <laughs> like, I have no idea what it's like in Australia and stuff. And I know some of you guys, like, I'm sure you can, but, you know, um, you might just want to call them and ask them. They have, they have a live chat, too. Um, pretty much, like, oh, yeah, so Kua asks, um, do you invest in multiple ETFs uh, per account or just those I mentioned in the article? I just I just did the ones I mentioned in the article actually. Um, except I just do the Admiralty ones. Uh, ETFs and stuff, uh, I am actually in the middle about learning more about them. I'm not, I don't have any experience with them to be completely honest with you guys. Uh, but they seem very interesting. I'm just like curious though because every single time, so from what I read, um, what differs about it is, and I could be wrong about this, but what I read was that it's based off of how frequently it's traded and stuff. And I'm just wondering, like, sort of the return, like, the return on, um, like, how much, if there's exchange fees per transaction and stuff like that. Um, because uh, the way, like, I understand it, like, index funds are traded, like, once a day or something like that. And then... Uh, ETFs are traded throughout the day and stuff. So, thanks, Kevin. Uh, so yeah. So I like I I'm still in the process of learning about that. Yeah. Um. Shane, thanks, Kevin. I'll see if I can meet some people around when the open day comes around. Yeah, dude. Uh, Shane, I I really think that's the best way to go, and just sort of talking to people has gotten me. I don't want to say super far in life, but it's done, it's helped a lot more than a lot of other things, you know, like, you can read all the, uh, you can read all the books you want, everything you want, but having a personal connection and having, like, sort of advisor help you out, that's, like, that's, like, the best thing, because you can, you get a better picture of, like, your current situation, right? Uh, I don't think Vanguard does outside the US citizens. I'm able to get an account because I'm an American citizen, but it's still called. There are other investment sites for around the globe. That's true. Yeah, that's 100% true, man. Like like I said, I don't know how it is outside the US. Um, and maybe I should have think about it now because I didn't know. I'll be truthful with you guys. I didn't know I had so many international like readers and stuff, you know? And um yeah, I just didn't know that. So maybe I should have been more specific. But I don't know, like, if you can or not. That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I actually... So Brian asks, have you ever considered investing in international stocks? Yeah, I have. Um, just to further, um, like, diversify and stuff, just in case the American market tanks and stuff like that. But uh, I just... I don't have, a, like, a lot of money in, in the... Um, international stocks I used to I did it when I was younger so what I did was I did like um, what's my split I think I did 30% large cap 30% uh, mid cap uh, small cap 30% small cap and the rest in international and stuff like that so that's how I broke it down and for you guys that don't know what I'm talking about like when I say large cap and mid cap so it's like the size of the companies and stuff like there's different index indexes right so um, basically 
uh, your large cap are your big companies, you know, um, things like, I don't know, maybe Walmart and stuff like that. Uh, and I don't know the exact criteria about like where the cutoff is, but then your mid cap is your middle companies, small cap are the smaller companies and stuff like that. So that's basically what I used to do. Um, but I pretty much like at the time, um, I just wanted those Admiralty funds so bad. So I just dumped all my money into Admi the Admiralty uh, funds and stuff. That's the only thing I do. I think right now I have, I definitely have enough money where I can diversify and stuff like that. And um, if you guys like pay attention to the market, which I don't really do that regularly, but the market's been doing really, really well. I'm actually, ex like my uncle and I were actually just talking and he thinks the market's gonna take a huge hit soon, so I don't know. Um, so, unassassinate. So, so, Sadiq Khan says, so, dude. Um, unassassinate says, what, co what do companies such as Fidelity or Vanguard actually do? So basically, think about it as like, so basically, Think about them as your sort of bank account, right? It's like your bank account. They hold your money. But when you're trying to buy like a stock or an index fund or any sort of fund, right? You can't do it yourself. You have to have them do it for you. And so what they do, they on your behalf in, like invest for you, right? And in exchange, they take a piece. Uh, piece of the money so that might be an expense ratio so how much percent of your portfolio that they they take and stuff like that um, so yeah that's pretty much what they do you can't just like invest it yourself and stuff like that although that would be bomb but I don't know man uh, um, Greek geek sorry geek film game is it better to invest in small companies or big companies when starting off? I would say just go broad, di diversify, man. Um, do both, dude. <laughs> Warriors fuck- What? What? The Warriors lost. Oh, man. Brandon's gonna be wicked sad when he gets home. Fuck. Damn. What kind of accounts use compound interest? I don't really understand your question. Um. Like, I, I don't really know what you're kind of asking. So, um, so instead of, like, thinking about accounts using compound interest, just think of it as an after effect, right? So what compound interest is, is, like, when your money starts getting interest on itself. Let's say you have a regular bank account, right? It's making 1%, which is shitty, but it's what, let's say 1%, right? Uh, you throw $100 in there, eventually you make $10, right? When that $10 starts making the extra 1%, that's the beginning of the compound interest and stuff like that. So I don't really know what your real question is, but I think, I hope that helps a little bit, right? Um, I'm in the middle, uh, Sadiq Khan, I'm in the middle of getting cussed up by everyone. <laughs> Dude, sad. I, I didn't think the Warrior. yeah, I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I didn't, I thought the Warriors would win, actually, so, whatever. Huh. Uh, Sadiq asks, what's so bad about retail pharmacy, and didn't you make bank? Yeah, I made quite a bit of money, and I still make quite a bit of money. Um, it's that's a that's a real big question, dude, and I don't think I really want to answer it. But I think the hardest part about retail pharmacy is actually dealing with really ignorant people, and you just have to deal with a lot of dumb people. Like, and no matter how much time you take to explain or be patient with them. There's gonna, always gonna be like ungrateful people. There's always gonna be racist ass people. One person was like, like I wouldn't sell them syringes, you know, because my pharmacy were located in a high abuse population. 
And if you throw a syringe in the trash and the state finds out, doesn't even need to be me. It could be a customer who bought a syringe from my pharmacy, threw it in the trash, that's a $125,000 fine. So I'm not going to risk my pharmacy uh, with that, right? So he cusses me out. I, like, honestly, I've developed a sense where I can tell if somebody's a drug, like, a drug fiend or not. I don't know, like, it's kind of bad, but some, like, a lot of times, like, I just, I just have the sixth sense, right? And he goes, like, <laughs> what happens if somebody's dying and needs a syringe? I was like, dude, if you're dying, you don't need a syringe. You need 911. But, and then he just, like, stormed off. He's like, this is in Japan, bro. Like, blah, 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 blah. I was like, fuck you, dude. I'm not even Japanese, man. Like, fuck that shit. Like, just get the fuck out of my pharmacy. Like, I just don't want to deal with you. And it's just like that, you know? Like, I provide them, like, all their alternatives. Like, hey, go to X, Y, and Z, stuff like that. Doesn't want to listen? Too bad. I'm not forcing you to get your shit here. So, yeah. Um, anyways, back to... Uh, so, so for syringes, like in Cal state, state of California, any pharmacist can, um, furnish some, like syringes and stuff like that. And at my old pharmacy, we used to do it all the time, but since we have such high abuse rates, um, in the area I am, they just don't want us to sell syringes. So that's what I do. I don't sell syringes. Um, I think I'm going to change the topic right now. Uh, do you guys have any more, like, investment questions and stuff like that? Hey. Hey. You doing the... Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, um, otherwise, like, I'm going to open up to a general Q&A right now. Brian asks, have you thought about investing in property like I saw JK people do? Joe, I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> um, have I thought about investing in property? I think like, okay, so here's my stance on like investing in houses and shit like that. Like, I guess like when, I see like I'm at that age where a lot of my friends right now, they're all buying houses, right? What do they do? They sell, save up all their money and dump it into a house, right? And I don't think, don't get me wrong, I don't think buying a house or investment is a bad sort of thing. Like, rich people do all the time. There's a reason why. It provides really good cash flow. Um, it provides really good cash flow and whatnot. But I feel like, let's say you want to ride a motorcycle, right? I'm sure you, maybe that's a bad example. But you need to take things in steps. That's what I'm trying to get at, right? And for me, like, I want to build other assets so that, and eventually when I get to that level, maybe I will buy a house and add it to my portfolio. Just like how, like, when I talk about stocks and stuff, right, I wasn't automatically into peer-to-peer -peer lending, like, in the beginning. I didn't automatically buy that $10,000 minimum for Vanguard. I didn't fucking have that money, right? But you have to realize, sometimes your investments, they'll tank and stuff. And you just need to take things in steps. You can't just, like, go fucking YOLO into this, like, house and shit, you know? And that's just how I feel, you know? I don't think it's a bad investment, but at my stage right now, I don't want to tie up all my money into a house. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Fawad is, like, your main house is not asset. It makes you lose money. That's right, because it's tied up. Like, you can't... I guess you can get equity against the house and stuff like that. But, um... I Yeah, you're right. All your money is freaking locked up into that shit. So... Uh... Aren't JK crew in Hawaii? Obviously not, since Joe is behind me. Um... Was it easy for you to get into farm school? I'll talk about pharmacy school in a bit. I'll, I'm going to do a separate Q&A for pharmacy school and stuff like that. Um, anywhere but here investing scares me a bit because nobody in my family ever invested in America like this is a decision I'm making on my own as a young person saw me future fam uh, I can't uh, won't struggle it's so intimidating okay so that's a really good question and that's actually what I really want to talk about right there 
anyone but here, like, dude, I totally feel you because it's fucking scary, like, going into something that you don't understand and putting your trust in it. Just because I say, like, oh, it's a good investment doesn't mean that you should do it. And I think that's a really great point. So, anywhere but here. So, this is for you. Like, dude, no one's asking you to take your life savings and throw it into all these investments. Dude, just start with something easy. Like, $10. No, let's say $1. Okay. Everybody can afford... A lot of people can afford $1 a month, right? Uh, like, literally, all you got to do is find 20 cans and cash them out. That's a dollar right there. And just set up for automatic investment. And the longer, you, the sooner you start, and when you get to see growth, I'll make you, that's the best motivation. I'll make you want to do it even more, right? And just because you do $1 a month, like, you can always ramp it up. You can always go to, it's so much easier to start going from $1 to $5, you know, and then you can go from five to like, dude, so when I first started like, um, investing, I didn't have that much money, you know, like I was doing like fucking $25 a month, you know, just $25 a month. And because like I wasn't, I was literally working only eight hours a week and stuff. It wasn't that much. Uh, but then I started seeing growth and that was the biggest motivation for me. When I saw like my returns, I was like, holy fuck, I'm making, it wasn't a lot. Don't get me wrong. Like if you don't put any, that much in, you're not going to get a lot. But I think that was a huge motivation factor. Like checking, hey dude, I actually made money and guess what? I didn't do shit. I was just like living my life sleeping, you know, and this is one of the, you might not realize, it's not sexy, it's not like, oh, I'm gonna be fucking, make it rain money, go to strip club every single night, and get rich, you know? But you're starting to build passive income for yourself. Like, when I talk about, like, living off your dividends and stuff, that's passive income, dude. And so it's one of the easiest entries ways into passive income. So, yeah, that's why I chose, like, that's why I chose this as my sort of my first investment rather than a house and stuff like that, you know? Whew. Um, yeah, so like I said, recap, just um just take a small amount and just start investing. You you really have nothing to lose, you know, or very little to lose if you even do a small amount, right? Um just understand like like take the time to just take some time like to understand how do I look at a fund like and see if it's a good investment decision or not? Or what are the leg like how do I how do I use even the website? How do I navigate the website? What do I do when I get need to get help? Set up set up all these like contingency plans, like backup plans, or like when shit goes wrong, you know what to do, right? So it's a good uh, it's a good learning experience. Some of my relatives got rich off investing in properties in New York, yeah. And I'm sure it's a great investment. And like, um, when you have a business and stuff, like it's, it's, it's probably great. But I feel like if you graduate straight from school and stuff, dumping all your money into a house that you'll be living in might not be the best investment. Like that's why I live in this household because I don't want to tie up all my money in a house. I could afford one definitely, but when I'm just like living with roommates because I'm saving so much money, it's the environment, the environment's great here. And um, yeah, so, and I can keep my money liquid. Like let's say if my mom needs a surgery or something, like I always have the option to, I have more options. I can sell like my investments to help pay for a surgery or whatever, you know, like I'm just giving examples, but you can see that have like dumping all your money in a house sometimes isn't the best the best way so and the same goes with like paying off all your student loans all at once right so yeah uh what a bullshit says unassassinate uh Fouad, it's not your house fully as long as the government is taxing on it that is true people forget about the taxes and stuff and you are still you're gonna pay yeah a lot of people don't figure that um like figure that in with the cost of the house they're just like oh you're wasting money paying rent no you're wasting you're when you pay rent 
your thing I think about it as delegating the responsibility out for a fraction of the cost yeah maybe you're not putting your money into something but you're saving a lot more money like paying rent and you can also invest that remaining money somewhere else right so that's how I think of rent and a lot of people will probably like disagree with me and it's probably not not what your parents will tell you and my parents are like oh Kevin when are you gonna buy a house when are you gonna get married and shit fuck that um not right now you know uh yeah California uh, Fouad says California and New York are not good for renting out stuff. They're liberal states. Um, Caleb Caleb Schrader says, "What do you mean not good for renting? People want to live there, so they'll be willing to rent." Caleb is like, "They are still good, but they be careful because not everybody's good to live in your apartments. You can't kick them out in a liberal state if as long as they're still paying rent." messed up in a way hey that's the motto true man um <laughs> like if you guys don't know my family's from boston and stuff and my uncle he was a landlord and almost like a full year his tenants did not pay but according to the like, like the laws and stuff uh in massachusetts and whatnot you can't go into an apartment and kick them out like and they were able to live like in my uncle's apartment for free for a whole fucking year so yeah sometimes it doesn't always work out like that that's a good point Fouad. um and then Caleb is like yeah eviction laws and rights do very state to state yeah so that's the one that's true um um <sighs> okay um do you guys have any other questions and stuff like that Audio. Static. What the fuck? Hold on for a second. Let me fix it. Oh, my bad. My friends were just texting me. Is it better now? My bad. Hey, is it is it still staticky? It's good. It's good. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Cool. Cool, dude. What the hell? Shout out Cleveland, <laughs> dude. There's Warrior fans in here, man. I'm gonna get hella hate. Um. Cool, dude. Oh, uh, I think like, yeah. So, back to my article really quick. Um. I think like I just want to sum up really quickly is that it's it doesn't really matter what you do um, just get started and I just want you like when you start seeing like sort of the small successes or small wins like it's gonna make you more curious and stuff about other options and whatnot and I found that like happening to me because I was really not into this shit like ever you know and but like it becomes almost like a game, dude. It's like you're leveling up and shit. Like, you're playing this RPG, you're fucking grinding and stuff, and you get to see some of the rewards come in. So, uh, some of the things I, I'm doing right now um, to diversify right now, um, I was thinking about... My friend was my friends were talking about, like, uh, index, uh, like, IULs and life insurance and stuff like that, or, like... Um, cash value life insurance but I don't think that's really for me um, I don't know I just have really bad feelings about it there's a like a loophole they pretty much call it the rich person's Roth IRA 
thinking about that, I was also looking at uh, Prosper and Lending Club and stuff like that, which I dumped uh, actually almost a few grand into Lending Club, and I'm just playing with it. It looks pretty promising. Like, dude, you get 8% off of it. It's pretty good. Um, and so that's those are some of the other options I'm, I'm planning to do. I don't know enough like about like those peer-to-peer -peer lending stuff yet, but as soon as I find out, I'll probably talk about it a little more. Um, do I invest in stocks? Yeah, I have a few stocks. I'm not, uh, Jessica asked, do you have do you invest in stocks? I invest in a few stocks, not too many, um, just because like I'm always worried. I only um, the reason why I invest in the stocks was because I got them at a fucking good discount. So like I said, I'm Chinese. I, I love the Mata Good Deal, man. And so like I was getting like my CVS stocks for like 40% off and stuff. And so it was stupid for me not to dump money into it. And they actually went out like $50 per share, which was awesome, dude. So that was extra money right there. Um, yeah. Uh, is it me or is it you can control business investments more than real estate and stocks? Yeah, that's true. Um, Cause like when you're investing in stuff into a market, you're kind of, you don't really have like, um, you don't really have control, like complete control of like over your, your, your performance and stuff. It's really up in the air and basing it off, like having faith in the market, having faith that tomorrow, like even though the market might be crashing down, like having faith that it will do better tomorrow and go back up right so like if you have your own business and stuff you're right you definitely have more control over that and whatnot like for example pharmacy and stuff like you can always figure out a way to drive more scripts you can always find out a way to increase your immunizations provide mtm consultations you know stuff like that there's you have a lot more control but like i said with uh, stocks and stuff, investments, like if you're doing index funds and stuff like that, you don't have as much control. <clears throat> Reckless Noob asks, how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing this since I was like 11. <laughs> like my, so I talked a little bit about it, but I was actually at um, Chuck E. Cheese when my uh, fucking uncle pulled me aside and told me to, uh, to not dump my money in the banks anymore. And that started. And then um, he used to drop off like not um, money magazine at my place all the time. And then I started getting to like when I got a little older. Um, I told this story on like Refugee Hustle, but I got my first fucking overdraft fee. I was like, "Mother bitch!" Like, dude, that fucking sucked because that was my moment where I realized, like, dude, if I didn't change, like, I'd be fucked for the rest of my life. Like, I was like, if like. For me, like one of the hardest things is that it's hard for me to stay organized and stuff. So then that's when I started researching into books and stuff or about investment. And I one of the people that I used to follow was uh, Ramit Sethi. Like I read his book, like I Will Teach You to Be Rich, and that's one of my favorite investment books. But I also read like things like Intelligent Investor, um, the best investment you'll ever make um like pretty much all the main like investment books i've read on before so i've been doing it for uh a long time how do you uh jessica asked how do you determine the first one to invest in i want to but i'm not sure how to decide which one to invest in first dude i gave you all i gave you all the options in uh, that article man like those are those are the invest exact investments that i invested in at every point of my stage and that's probably the best way just to start out. So just go with it. Uh, if you want to, like, if you're looking for some metrics to determine, like, hey, this is a good fund, this is a shitty fund, you want to look at expense ratio and um, performance, I guess, you know? You want to know that you're going to, um, like, you want to know that the fund's doing well and that you're not getting eat up by fees and stuff, that they're not charging unnecessary shit. So that's what happens a lot of time when you have managed funds and stuff. Like, dude, they start charging you all this money and then there goes all your return. And like, it's like, what the fuck, man? Like, and that's where studies say that, hey, when it comes to long-term investing, index funds are the way to go because 
you're going to make more money that way. They beat out managed funds and stuff like that. That's where you read stuff like that. Because why? The fucking fees eat you per- eat you up. Yeah, like one per- like like 5% doesn't sound that much. But when you look at it, when it cuts into your compound interest, it's a fuck, sh- fuck ton of money, man. Um, <clears throat> Raul. Hold on. I'm going to put this back in the fridge. <sighs> Sadiq, how do you? Dis- oh yeah, so um, rule. Oh shit, for- forgot about today's stream. That's cool, dude. Uh, thanks for joining, man. I watched a video on stocks and it says never to invest in oil. Only invest in things you know about. So if you're a tech guy, you- yeah, that's so true. Because like, honestly, I just thought about um investing into pharmaceutical companies and stuff. Um, just because like. I don't want to say I have the inner scoop, but, like, it's more easily for me to understand that jargon and stuff. And I think, like, if you read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad and stuff, he talks about this a lot. He talks about why did he get into real estate, even though I think he's, like, a fucking motherfucking scam artist sometimes. Or, like, um, like he's just selling you shit. But I think, like, his message is really good because he talks about, like, why he got into real estate. And it's because he understood the language and that's what he was naturally interested in and i think like that's something you want to do but for me like my primary goal is always build a really good foundation and then explore from there you know um i think that's really important and that's the one consistent thing that's always helped me with my life you know like for me right now pharmacy is like one of my consistent but that's my stable foundation right now um Ty Lopez, yeah, I, I dude, mother scam artist, man. <laughs> so the mother true. What? You went to a seminar? So Fuad says, true, I went to a seminar, they sell you up to $70,000. Yeah, they probably upsell you a lot, man. Wouldn't doubt it. I heard, I heard bad things about uh, Ty Lopez, but I don't really know everything about it. I don't really follow him. Um... Random question. Who did you personally want to win? Warriors or Cavs? Um, I'm not a really big sports fan, but uh, since Brandon is a huge Warriors fan, uh, probably the Warriors fan. Um, what is the best YouTube channel, book, website I can use to learn more about stocks? Um, a good book to start off reading, like if you want a simple book, like I said, uh, Ramit's I Will Teach You Be Rich book is like the easiest book to read. And I think that's a great book to start with. Second book is um, maybe Intelligent Investor, but it's fucking thick as fuck, dude. Um, in the future, I'm going to be making like a, a product for you guys too. So that should that should definitely like simplify a lot of this stuff. Because like what I realized was that, dude, there's all this shit everywhere and like, it's so confusing. Like, people are, like, contradicting each other. People are saying, oh, like, invest in this. No, invest in that. And it's just like the fitness world. Like, there's so many contradicting things that people are saying. And, I like, I, what I want to teach you guys is how to just simplify all the bullshit and just do it, you know? Um, so, yeah, those are some books I like. Um... As for YouTube channels, I don't really watch YouTube channels about finance and stuff. Like, I'm always too busy watching, like, gaming channels and bullshit like that. So, Ty Lopez isn't a scam. Uh, Ty Lopez isn't a scam. He helps you major themes, but not tactics. I want an iPad from Ty Lopez. <laughs> That's what you're funny, man. Um, yeah. Like I said, um, I, I, yeah. Uh, is it better to pick individual? Uh, Brian asks, "Is it better to pick individual stocks or go from mutual mutual slash index funds?" Right. Uh, like I said, I think it's probably better to go index funds for now, because like technically, when you're buying an index fund, you're buying small pieces of um, stocks and stuff, 
And hell, this is not really sexy, but it's the best way to go. Top three favorite games. Oh god, um, that I like playing or like watching. I like I like watch all the um, I like to watch a lot of streamers and stuff. Sometimes on Twitch and whatnot. One of my uh, favorite streamers is probably Maximus Black because he's black and he uh, plays games, so he's hella funny. Um, I watch Dashy games sometimes. Uh, forget who else I watch, but yeah, that's who I watch sometimes. <sighs> okay. Oh. No. Good. Yeah, I'm like getting so tired. I've been talking for like over an hour, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. Playing games? Um, here, I'm going to open up to general QA. I'm going to actually hold on for a second. I'm going to close this for a second and I'm going to change the title really quick. Hold on for a second. Doing the thumbnail. Oh, I'm not retired. I'm not retired. I'm not retired. So, uh, sorry, I, I'm like uh, doing some stuff right now, but um, Jessica asks, what are your thoughts about CDs? Um, CDs not. Um, I don't really like. Like I said, you shouldn't like. So you have all the think of all all these options as like kind of like tools, right? You wouldn't use a hammer when you would use a screwdriver and stuff. So I think like when you're on the later part of life, maybe you would do CDs. But CDs honestly kind of fucking suck. That's like one percent. That's pretty shitty. You're not even like beating out inflation. People say that inflation is about. Um, Inflation is about uh, 4%. If you do SEO right, you can make your vid about investing as recommended after any channel you want. The SEO. Tax lands. Yeah. Reckless Noob asks, how much free time do you have to... <laughs> Dude, uh, I'm always fucking busy, but, um, like, I work... My hours are pretty fucking crazy and stuff. Like, when I'm not working at the pharmacy, I'm usually writing or, like, at a coffee shop just doing work all the time. Sometimes, like, I make it a priority sometimes, like, on Saturdays and whatnot, weekends, to, like, just go out and go clubbing and stuff. I really like that. Um, tax lens are super high return. Oh, What? What? Tax lands are super high return, like almost 30%? What the fuck? Seriously? 
Oh man, how did you work your way up to a pharmacy manager? Um, I really didn't have to work that hard. Uh, like, like I was just good at my job, and then my manager actually just wanted to switch places with me. I didn't want to take pharmacy manager, but I ended up doing it, and I think it was a good choice because, like, even though it's more responsibility, I can run things the way I want. I don't have to like listen to other people and stuff. At the end of the day, like I can I always have the option to be like, fuck you. It's my pharmacy, my name's under the license, so I wanna run it the way I want to, you know? And if you don't like it, go take a hike, dude. Um, yeah, so that's how I did pharmacy manager. Oh man. Um so, so I'm just tweaking some stuff right now. Uh, Fawad asks, what would I do if I were back in my teens? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, so, what did I do in my teens? I'm trying to think about what I used to do in my teen, uh, teen, teenager years. I think, like, my biggest, honestly, one of my biggest regrets, or one of the things that I think about a lot sometimes, even this day, was that, dude, I worked too fucking hard back then. You know, I still have the same problem right now, like, it's hard for me to take a vacation. It's hard for me to, like, sort of relax sometimes. But, like, in, let me give you a picture. Like, in high school, I took, like, over 10 APs, right? I was trying to be, like, I was, like, literally killing myself. I gave myself fucking shingles because my immune system was, like, shit. That sucked. Like, dude, you never hear about kids getting shingles, but, like, I gave myself shingles, basically. Like, I killed my immune system that bad, you know? Yeah, I know. It's fucking crazy, right? And for you guys who don't know what shingles is, it's when chicken, like, chicken pox basically comes back, but it comes back really fucking painful, and people get nerve damage from it. So, yeah, it fucking sucked when um, I was in high school. And I was just always stressed. I never, like, I was always studying and stuff. And it wasn't until, like, maybe senior year where I started, like, going out and stuff, but I was like, fuck, man, like, I wish I, like, spent more time being, like, more of a kid and just playing, you know? And I think that's one of my biggest, like, sort of regrets and stuff. Like, I was so, like, so caught up in just, like, hustling and shit, you know? Like, I I chose to go to engineering school. Who the fuck wants to go to engineering school, like, straight out of, like, high school, you know? Like, when you go to engineering school, what, what does that mean? Like, it's a fucking sausage fest. Like, for every, like, for every... It's like a 80-20 ratio. So, like, for every every four guys, it's one girl. It fucking sucks. So, you're not going to be getting pussy, right? And also, um, it was just a really bad environment. The people that I met in engineering school were, like, had no people skills. They didn't want to go out at, or anything at all. And I just felt... I think that's when I felt at my lowest, dude, because I didn't have any friends in uh, engineering school or anything like that. And... If I, but basically to answer your question, if I were to go back and be a teen, I would, um, I would focus rather than being the best at everything. I would just focus on a few things that I was actually interested in, you know. Um, and I think like one of the things I kind of regret was uh, I didn't, I didn't start making videos like sooner, because like I do it now and I see like, I see like how. It's so cool that you can just like, like just talk into a camera, spread your message, and like people watch it and like your shit. It's like really cool, and I think that's when I probably needed it the most, like when I was a teen or like college and stuff, because I needed that connection with people, right? So yeah, instead I was just like too busy chilling, with fucking hood rats, and like going out to parties and stuff, which was fun. I don't regret any of that. 
but I just like wish I spent more time just like enjoying life, you know. Yeah, uh, anywhere but here. Damn, 10 APs. Why? Because I wanted to. Uh, it's kind of like, dude. My family. It's not like we're we're dumb or anything like that, but I wanted to like. I sort of wanted to go to Ivy League school, which I never got into. I wasn't even fucking close, because even though I took 10 APs, didn't mean I was good at them. I sucked at a lot of them, actually. And actually killed my GPA a little bit. Um, so, yeah, it, I didn't really know how to balance it at all. So, uh, how did you... How did you feel about Brexit? What's Brexit? I'm going to Google it really quick. Oh, the whole British thing? Uh, oh, fuck. Um, how did I meet uh, my current housemates? Actually, through Cam. Um, so when I came to California, I didn't really know anyone. So, uh, like, I used to watch, like, a lot of the JK videos, like, a lot, you know? And so then... Um, I saw like Ken was doing some dance lessons and stuff, and I just decided to show up. And then I met Ken, I met Joe, and all them. So, yeah. First exit of the EU. Uh, I watched a Vice documentary on the British exit of the EU and stuff, um, but I really don't have a opinion about it. What's the job market for pharmacists right now? Uh, depends what feel. Um, I've actually, like, talking to my friend, uh, Brian, I just did a video with him pretty recently, but uh, we were talking about, like, how there's a lot of opportunity in uh, informatics pharmacy. So, I like, I I'll probably do a video later on it asking him more about it because he's, like, the expert in it. But um, there's a lot of different opportunities right now. Like, when it comes to retail and stuff, like, I, I honestly, like, looking back at it, if you want a stable lifestyle, sort of, like, it might be a good route to go. But, um, I don't know, like, there's that inner drive in me, which is like, dude, I just want to do so much more, you know, because you learn a lot in retail pharmacy. And I think, one, like I said, one of the hardest things about pharmacy, like, retail is, like, dealing with dumbass people. Like, face it, like, not everybody's educated. People will like displace their like their unhappiness on you all the time, all the fucking time, dude. And you just gotta do your best to keep your temperament and shit. So I don't know. A lot of time, like I just fire my patients. Like I tell them not to come back, and like I just don't want to deal with it because for every like it really taught me how to be a lot more efficient with my time. Like why the fuck am I going to waste twenty of my minutes? like arguing with you when you know that you're not going to change your mind i'm not going to change my mind and i could be helping other pa patients that actually want my help rather than arguing with you it's really not worth it you're not worth their scripts like anything i say is not going to change your mind so why the fuck am i wasting my time on you so that's the that's how i go with it in it because i'm pretty nice like to everyone in my pharmacy you know so if you're giving me attitude and shit like it's like dude like, I understand everybody has their bad day and stuff, but some people are just, like, assholes and stuff. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity in informatics pharmacy right now. Alright guys, um, dude, I've been streaming for almost, how long, like an hour and 20 minutes, so I think I'm going to close my stream very soon, because I'm getting actually really tired, and I'm really hungry, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to leave, like, if you guys can, uh, just leave your last questions here, um, and then I'll close my stream in, like, two minutes um yeah hopefully like i just want to ask you guys did you like this stream and stuff like what do you guys think of it because um i'm deciding if i should do more of these or if i should just like if it's wasting your time i don't want to fucking i don't want to do it then you know but 
Um, I, I like these because I get to, like, give you really quick, like, answers, like, off the top of my head and stuff. Fuad asks iPhone versus Android. Nexus 6, baby. So, um, yeah, so I'm definitely an Android type of person. Because, like, one, like, I'm fucking cheap as hell. I don't like paying, like, overpaying for fucking iPhone shit. And uh, I like all the options with, like, the Nexus uh, Nexus line. So, and it's cool because Nexus is becoming more mainstream now. Before, it was just, like, a few people that just wanted, um, uh, that, it was just a few people that liked Nexus and stuff. Pretty cool. Informational comments were fun. Yeah. It's cool. Like, like I said, I really like interacting with you guys and stuff like that. Um, and... Yeah, uh, I actually got my this idea from like Matt because I always see him like late uh, late night stream and stuff. Like he'll get back from like the bars and stuff, and always complain how girls like how how shitty his date was and stuff like that. And I just was like, dude, it's so easy to just like turn on a camera and just talk to you guys. And so I think it provides a really good way um, as well. All right, guys. Okay. Yeah, no problem, guys. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Um, maybe in the future, I'll let you guys know. Uh, this was actually kind of last minute. Um, I probably sent out the email about 2 a.m. I'll probably give more notice next time in the future. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, guys. Peace.